What I will do today is take you through a couple of things. Um, I've actually mixed two presentations. So one, there is, one is more about Atlassian as a company, um, and the other one is about Confluence and HipChat. Um, they're not completely separate things, of course. Um, there's a good reason that I've mixed them, because um, we like our own software very much. We're probably the biggest fans of our own software. Um, and uh, we use it so much that um, by showing you how we work, uh, and showing you what we do in the tools. Um, we actually hope that we can make you uh, a better company uh, yourself as well. Um, before I start and go into the presentation, and don't worry, I'll speed up the slides very quickly once we go into it. There are 78 slides to go. Um, <laughs> and I have 45 minutes, and there's only about 40 left, I think. Um, what I will do is uh, I will be talking about a couple of things that you <coughs> probably don't want to tell your kids. So uh, let's start by uh, first talking about um, the real keynote that you are going to have today. Uh, you all know Dirk, right? Who doesn't know Dirk? OK, everybody knows Dirk. Um, so he was going to do a talk, and I, I couldn't find the title of the keynote that he was going to do. So I just made this up as Collaboration Revisited Judgment Day. Um, he's not here. So what happened? Well. Does anybody know what this is? It's a tree. <laughs> Specific tree. It's an apple tree. It's not 100% accurate, this anecdote, but it's pretty close. Has anybody heard of this expression? Low-hanging fruit. And you should always go after the low-hanging fruit. That's the easy bit. Because why? Well, it's pretty simple. Because when you go for the low-hanging fruit, <coughs> you walk just to a to the lowest branch and you start picking the fruit that you want, and there you go. Simple, simple solution for a simple problem. Not Dirk. <laughs> Dirk went all the way up into the tree. Bad idea. And that's why I'm here. <clears throat> there you go. I turn this. Um, this is me. Um, I'm team lead for uh, the experts team in, uh, in Europe. You have water, by the way? You have water? Thank you. <clears throat> that means that I, um, I run a team in Europe of about um, three and a half people right now, I guess. Uh, we're in the process of hiring. Um, I'm looking after the German region for the moment as well, uh, which is why I'm lucky enough to be presenting here today. Thank you. Uh, and I'll be talking about Confluence and HipChat uh, and what we like to call collaboration in an Aussie style. You know we're an Australian company, right? Um, so what I'll be doing is um, I'll give you a few of the ingredients that we use to collaborate. And obviously, our tools are going to be a part of that. But it's not just our tools. We actually start with our values. And if you've worked with us a little closer uh, in the past, then you probably know that values are really, really important for us as a company. So are, of course, our people. Our people are the biggest assets that we have, and, but we have some big challenges there. And, <clears throat> and to, um, to work with these challenges, that's where we're going to need our tools. So first of all, the values that we have. I'm going to give it one more try to uh, spin this a little bit so that I can see what I'm talking about. All right. Um, so the first, the first part for us that was really important in, the, in coming up with our values is how do you actually define those? Can, I mean, you can't just make them up, can you? Um, and <clears throat> so one of our employees who, uh, who joined uh, a year and a half ago, he said the Atlassian values are real and not just PR bullshit. And I'm sure that you've all seen companies and maybe have even worked for companies where you do have values but everybody that is working there feels like somebody just made them up. We use them to recruit people. It's just marketing and nothing else. Not so for us. And I think what is important in that is to understand that you just don't set core values, <clears throat> but you discover what your core, core values are. And that's exactly what we did as a company. And this is actually from quite some time back already when we I uh, realized that we were growing very fast and we needed something to keep the culture of the company because the culture of a company is very important to us. And we felt like 
the best way to guarantee that we're keeping that culture is that we, we clearly define what our values are and we, we come up with those ourselves. And, and that's what they did. So what are the values? Has anybody seen those before, by the way? I'm, I'm not counting the, the expert partners, because they should. Um, first one is open company, no bullshit. Um, and that's very important because um, I don't know if you're all in software, but uh, I'm sure it's the case in other industries as well. But certainly in software, there is an awful lot of bullshit. Uh, and there is an awful lot of companies that are not as transparent uh, internally and externally as they, as they could be. So that's something that, that we're very proud about, is that we're very open about things and that you will see, hopefully when you talk to us as well, that we're very open uh, and honest about things. Um, and also if you would be working inside our company, uh, the fact that we're open and that we can have an open discussion about pretty much anything we want is a key uh, factor in our success. The second is built with heart and balance. And what do we mean by that? Well, probably what you see most of that is that we want to build uh, products um, that people lust after, that people really, really want to have. We want to make the best products that we can. Um, and we try to, to do that in a way <clears throat> that it remains healthy. We actually just had a, uh, an internal uh, blog post about one of the people in the management team who, who is encouraging uh, everybody to take more holidays because there is a feeling that we're all working too hard and we're not taking enough time off. Now, I understand that in a country like Germany, where you have about 75 holidays a year, that's perhaps, <laughs> that's perhaps less of an issue. Um, it's, not it's not sufficient. Uh, I've, been living, uh, I've been living in France for 14 years, and um, I think the French can compete with, with what you're doing here. So I'm fine with it. Don't get me wrong. Um, don't fuck the customer. Um, this is actually a, it's a, it's a, a rather old slide, because by now, I guess we have too many Americans in the company, and we're not allowed to write fuck anymore, so it has to be in, like, we just keep saying it. Um, and it's fu especially funny when you do this presentation in the US, um, because every time you say, don't fuck the customer, you can people, <laughs> did he really say that? Yeah, he said that. Um, and this is something that comes up internally all the time, whenever we make a decision about a change in a product, a pricing change, believe me or not, um, this comes up. Are we fucking the customer or not? Because we want to make sure that what we're doing is right for our customers. Fourth is play as a team. Um, there's quite a few of us today here, actually. Um, some that are very close to my own department, some that are uh, pretty far away, uh, either functionally or geographically. We have. Uh, we have one guy from, uh, from Sydney today in the back. I'll do a proper introduction, I guess, at the end. But uh, we have one from San Francisco. Um, but both of these guys, I won't say I talk to them every day, but I talk to them very, very frequently. Um, and you will see later on what, how we do that. But that's important for us, that we do it together as a team. And the final one that we use is Be the Change You Seek. And I don't know if you've heard of that one before, but it's my personal favorite in, in the values that we have. It, it, you could interpret it as, if you see a problem, sure, you can complain about it, but wouldn't it be much better if you actually go out and solve it? And that's what we allow you to do in Atlassian. Um, you spot a problem, rally up people, come up with ideas, and just fix it. Um, we're, going, we're growing with a very, very high speed. We're growing 40, 50% per year. We just don't have time to review all the time to come up with um, a solution that pleases everybody. We just need to keep going. Uh, and that's what we allow you to do. So <clears throat> going back to the theme of today's presentation, how, how, do we, um, how do you connect newbies, new employees, to these values that are so important to our company? Um, maybe to give an idea of where we are as a company, um, when I joined roughly two and a half years ago, there were less than 500 people in the company. So within the time of about two years, we've doubled. And we just double all the time. Uh, this year, we're adding 600 people to the company. Uh, so think of that. 900 people, we're adding 600. That's a crazy number. Um, we're doing that on five continents, although I had a discussion with Tony earlier, whether it's six, and I don't know. 
I just, even seven, I heard. It's a lot of continents. Uh, our main offices are in Sydney, where r and is, San Francisco, uh, Austin, Amsterdam, and Manila. Um, and then there's a few smaller offices where we have people working as well. So there's a lot of people, a lot of different places, a lot of different time zones. Um, so how do we live our values virtually across these five or six confluence? Well, so the first thing we do, of course, is confluence. So what I'll show you quickly is how we use confluence. And I, uh, I wanted to do it live, actually, but uh, the Wi-Fi is not that reliable, as you may have noticed. So I'm going to use screenshots instead. Um, this is what our dashboard looks like. Um, and I hope I didn't make a screenshot of something that is confidential. Um, I'm sure that my colleagues will help me and just deny I've ever showed this. Don't make any pictures. No. Um, this is what we do on our, on our dashboard. And this is, for most of us, is the first thing that we check when we arrive in the office. And actually, we check it a couple of times per day. And when I'm in the train, I check it on my mobile. Uh, it's the lifeline of communication for us and the lifeline for a lot of actions uh, that we do. Um, there's a couple of things that you may, may recognize. The dashboard itself, hopefully you're all using it. I should have checked, actually. How many of you are using Confluence? Well, that's quite a bit. OK, good. And how many of you are not in software development? Uh, OK, good, good. I'm not in software development, obviously. Um, so what I want to show you is, um, is how do we go about getting people into Confluence? Um, because that's where it starts with our values. Um, and actually, I liked quite a bit what I saw from uh, Cominardo. I, of course, I only understood the video in English, um, the karma part. Um, so that may be something that we should be looking into ourselves as well. But what we do is, is when we get an employee, let me go back one slide. Oops. Sorry. There. This is what your new employee looks like when he arrives in your organization doesn't have a face, nobody knows him. So the first thing that we need to do is to make that a person. Uh, and a person that everybody can recognize, whether you're in the office in San Francisco or in Sydney or in Amsterdam. You should be able to see him everywhere. So that's what we do. We, um, we make a picture of them. And we want them to upload it uh, to a blog post. So one of the things, by the way, uh, Ali, have you written your blog post already? OK, good. If for a lot of people that are new to the company, it's a bit like, ah, oh, this is awkward. I need to write a blog post. And we don't want you to write a blog post that you could have put on LinkedIn. Because we can all go to your LinkedIn profile or, or crossing, uh, I guess. Or should I say Xing? I never know that. Fine, works both ways. Um, so anyways, what we want you to do in the blog post is, is write something who you are as a person, uh, why you joined Atlassian. And sure, you joined us because you think it's a great company. But tell us a bit more about what, in particular, you're interested in. Uh, how do you spend your uh, time off work? What are your hobbies? Uh, what's your favorite sports club, et cetera? Uh, so we want, to, want it to be something personal so that the next time that I'll talk to you, whether it's through a page on Confluence, or it's an email, or in HipChat, or maybe on the phone, uh, I know who you are. Um, so I've taken my own as an example here. And again, usually I'll, I just switch to the live version here and show how that works. Um, no, I'm not going to do it. It's too risky. Um, <laughs> for those that are interested, I'm happy to show you afterwards uh, on, on, on the smaller screen. Um, so the idea is, again, that, that you show people who you are, uh, whether you have a family, um, what you care about. Um, <laughs> Then how do we use HipChat? And I'll be switching to, uh, to more functions here. How many of you are using HipChat? Ah. All right, I'm going to skip all the slides about Confluence now. We're just going to talk about HipChat from here on. Um, for those of you that don't know HipChat, uh, HipChat is chat, video, file, and screen sharing uh, built for Teams. Um, and that's actually something I forgot to mention. Pretty much everything we do at Atlassian as a company and, and the software that we build, we're building it for teams. We're building it for people to collaborate. Um, and HipChat is a very, very good example of that, how that works. 
So uh, if you're not using HipChat, uh, this is how people use it. Uh, it's, it's, it's available on most devices that people use today on, on a PC, on a Mac, uh, on their Android, <coughs> on an iPhone. Um, I don't like iPhones. On, um, on a Blackberry? Is that still available? <laughs> And that's just the humans that are using it. What is nice about HipChat is that we also allow you to do integration with bots and with systems. Uh, so that's very powerful if you're in software development. But I can show you as well that it's very powerful if you're not in, um, in software development. So what are the key features uh, today available? We have rooms, which are essentially uh, places where you can come together and, and chat. Um, we have one-on-one -on -one conversations that you can start. You can share files. Uh, so that's obviously very useful as well uh, across uh, your peers. Uh, you can use it everywhere you want. Um, literally, I end up doing hip chats with people all across the world. Um, well, not when I'm sleeping, but most of the other time I do. Um, and then there is integrations. Uh, and there's a couple of integrations that I'd like to show you. So what was uh, new? in the last 12 months. And so for those of you that are using it already, you can read this as new in the last 12 months. For those of you uh, that are not using it yet, just read it as this is something you could have in HipChat. Ha. Huh. All right. I should have mentioned, oh, there you go. It is actually working. I should have mentioned that uh, about four hours before I started this presentation, my keynote on my, uh, on my Mac uh, collapsed. And about half of my images disappeared. So I've been scrambling for about three hours to get everything back in order. If you see a weird slide, blame it on that. Sorry. Um, this is uh, pointing out that a lot of people today um, are using all sorts of different chat, uh, phone, uh, email, etc., tools to communicate with each other. Um, and so wouldn't it be nice if you actually have one tool for any type of business conversation that you're going to have. Um, and so what we added is video. Um, so this is something that um, we're using internally uh, almost as the, the, main, uh, the, the single way to, to do video conferencing with each other. Um, so every one-on-one every -on -one conversation in which we need video, uh, we use this as a tool. So that's the first one that we added, video. The second that we added was uh, a server version. Um, and uh, I know enough about the German market to know that HipChat has been a difficult uh, sell um, in this country because you don't like stuff to be stored in the cloud, not in Germany. Um, and our servers happen to be uh, with Amazon. Uh, and we can tell Amazon a little bit where they put it. but. Clearly, that's not good enough uh, for your even uh, your legal uh, obligations, right? Um, so we know that the server version is very uh, important uh, for the market here. So we've opened it up and made it a public beta. Uh, so it used to be. Um, so we ran it for a long time as a closed beta. We've now opened it up for everybody, and so everybody that is interested in using it. Um, can install it, so you can put it in your own data center. Uh, you get all the apps and functions that you get with the cloud version, uh, and you get integration with directories. Um, so this is something that I highly recommend to check out if you haven't done so yet. You can go to uh, hipchat.com slash server and sign up for the trial uh, of the beta, uh, and you can download it from there. Any questions you have about that later on? Um, just come see one of the Atlassians later on, or talk to your, your expert partner here, of course. Um, so what else is there? Uh, there, is a, there is a free, free plan. What does that mean? Well, it means that um, before, you actually had to pay uh, to use uh, HipChat uh, if you were more than five, if I remember correctly. Um, and we changed that. We just made it completely free. So the basic, uh, the standard hip chat uh, that some of you have probably been using for quite some time, it's completely free. Um, what do you get for that? Um, you get the chat, you get the different apps, 
Uh, you get storage. Um, you have ac guest access, so you can get people that are not in your company involved in the conversation as well. Um, and you can search your chat history up to 25,000 messages. If you take plus, we also give you extra file storage, unlimited. We give you unlimited search. Uh, and the best part, of course, is we give you the video. Does anybody know already how much you're paying for HipChat Plus? Hmm, it's $2 per user a month. How much is that? It's less than a cup of coffee. <laughs> it's pretty cheap. And of course, we're not done with uh, HipChat as it is today. We have, uh, we have a big team of developers actually working on it. Um, if I'm not, I think we've grown it from four people, uh, or uh, I think it was four, when we acquired a company uh, several years ago, to about 50 people now, and we're still adding more people to that team. So we're betting big on HipChat. Um, and so you're seeing some of the results of that already. So one of the things that you're seeing is that HipChat helps you um, to work in context, to collaborate in context. That's what is important about it. Um, and so one way of doing that is by adding more integrations. How do we integrate? Well, there's, there's various examples here, and I'm going to skip through them because we're starting to run out of time, I think. So there's various ways you can integrate with, uh, you can get plugins from the marketplace uh, to do integrations with other systems. Of course, uh, there is some, uh, there are integrations with our own products, such as Confluence and Bitbucket. So if you're not in software development, you probably never heard about Bitbucket. That's fine. Um, so Confluence um, is, is a good example of how you can integrate it with HipChat. For example, we've set it up in our office that whenever there is a change uh, for the pages around our office, so uh, what you can do in the office, where you find stuff, who to call to, et cetera, whenever there is a change, there is an update in the HipChat room as well. So people get notified of changes in an instant matter. Uh, this is an example of uh, a Confluence integration uh, where you get notified. This is an example where you get notified uh, by uh, a commit uh, in Bitbucket. Um, and then if you're seeing a need for an integration with another system, it's simple. You can just build it yourself. Uh, HipChat is supporting Atlassian Connect, uh, which is the standard method now for creating add-ons. Um, to interface with, with most of our applications. Um, I actually saw a very good example uh, in the break from one of, the, one of the guys from Kamala Tech, I think it was. I can't find him now. Um, but if you're interested in, in, in having a, a hands-on example of what you can do yourself uh, for an HipChat uh, integration, check out that guy with the hat. He's no longer there. Is that? No. Nope. So. Um, the other thing we did, uh, and that's uh, for those of you that have used HipChat for a while already, they may have noticed, we did a new client. We did a refresh of the client. So there's a couple. I'm just going to highlight a few functions here. Uh, we did a new grouping of the sidebar. So we've made it easier to identify what is a room and who, uh, with whom are you having one-on-one -on -one conversations. Um, we made it uh, easier to do add mentions. Uh, so I, I think add mentions has been mentioned a few times today already. So it's becoming the standard way in Atlassian tools to get more people uh, into a discussion or uh, uh, a review or a, a meeting, whatever it is you're having where you need more people. Um, and so in HipChat, uh, we, we made it really simple to, to use add mentions to get more people in. You have the option to get everybody in if you use an add all. Um, you can do an ad here to get the people that are just in the room. Um, and so again, we just made it easier to, to get more people involved. Whoa, what happened there? That was too quick, fine. <laughs> All right, let's uh, go back to Confluence. And I'll show you a couple of things uh, that we're working on in Confluence. Uh, this is going to be a bit of a challenge because there's a couple of screen cams or screen demos so I think I'll end up doing something like this and try to point out what's happening on the screen. We'll see how it goes. Um, so Confluence, uh, as 
I'm sure is, is the case for, for quite a few already, is, is a place where you create, collaborate, and you act on content. So what did we add in the last 12 months? And I'll do this fast. Um, if you're into agile planning, I hope you've seen this already. Uh, we added agile planning to, to Confluence, so we made it much easier to work on that. Uh, we added Confluence questions. How many of you are using Confluence questions already? Wow, only one. <laughs> All right. Where are the expert partners? They need to do a better job in pitching <laughs> Confluence questions, I think. <laughs> and then we add a data center. Um, so data center, let's talk about that quickly. I'll skip those. Confluence questions. Uh, for those of you that haven't seen it, uh, there's just one slide on it. But uh, it's essentially, if you're familiar with answers.atlassian.com, uh, it's the same thing, but for yourself. So uh, people can ask questions. Uh, people can uh, uh, answer questions, of course. You can vote on a, um, uh, an answer. Um, you can have a discussion about an answer. People um, get points. Uh, they get karma, actually, not to be confused with <coughs> Cominardo's karma, I guess. Maybe, actually, it could be the same. Um, so it's a nice way of creating uh, a vibrant um, discussion platform within your company. Um, we used ourselves a lot. Um, on the very first, one of the first slides that is showed on the dashboard, typically what we see on, in, in the top questions in our own company are questions from people that are new to the company. Guess what? I mean, we have so many new people every day, every week. Uh, so for us, that's a very efficient way of making sure that all these questions that are very often, of course, the same, get answered in the best way because everybody can contribute and make it a better answer instead of one person trying to write up frequently asked questions and their answers. There's about 450 organizations using it, and this presentation was from Summit, so I, it must be about 500 now. Um, and usually I don't like these slides when they come from the US because these are all US companies, um, most of them, I think. Um, there's quite a few in, in Europe as well. And actually, if you look at uh, the map of where our customers are from, uh, we discovered that there's even one from, um, from Mauritius. Um, and he asked about global warming. Oh, it's not there yet. Sorry, there. Data center. Um, so for those of you that haven't heard about Data Center yet, um, it's a version of uh, currently Jira and, and Confluence and soon Stash as well um, that is aiming for high availability, uh, for instant scalability, and for performance uh, at scale. So it's, it's meant for big uh, or mission-critical installations of, of Jira, Confluence, and Stash. Um, if you want to hear more about it, we're actually uh, we're running a session tomorrow morning here in Frankfurt. Um, if, you're, if you're not uh, invited already, then come to talk to one of us, uh, either from Cominardo or Catworks or one of the Atlassians. Um, there's Otto in the back. There's Ken in the back. There is Ali over there. Tony is still there, but I think Tony is checking his email. Is he? Is there? <laughs> Ah. And then, has anybody seen Eric? All right, we're just going to add mention Eric and get him in here at some point. Um, that, did I miss anybody from us? No, good. Uh, so we would love to have you there tomorrow morning. Uh, I think we start at 9, 9.30ish, something like that. If you have time, interested in data center, come stop by. Um, the next few... Slides, uh, this is actually about the new uh, feature or set of features. We're working on roadmap planner, uh, planning, uh, for which we're doing something that we call roadmap planner. Unfortunately, that is one that suffered from the crash earlier today in my keynote. So there's no recording available. So we're just going to skip to the next one, which is page reviews. Uh, and page reviews, it, it was funny when I was uh, preparing this presentation because page reviews, this feature is something that we've been using internally for quite a bit already. Uh, as I said, we like our own products. And one way to test our products and to go about new ideas is that we install them in our own confluence and we just use it 
And this one, it seems we've been using for a while already, so I was surprised that this is not officially in the product yet. So what does it do? And hopefully you, you can see it. Um, let's see. Uh, so is it, it's probably not too easy to read, but um, let me explain what we're doing here. So this is a, this, this is a standard way of uh, commenting on something that you're reading in an article or a blog post, right? You copy a bit uh, from, from the article, you format that as a quote, and that's it. You leave a comment. So what we're doing here is something much more clever. Uh, you select the bit that you want to comment on. Let me move over here. And then it, you will see there is a highlight where you can just hit a plus, and it will open a little box at the right. And right there, you have your little Confluence editor. Um, so you can leave a comment there. Um, voila, that was it. Um, <clears throat> you can go further down, uh, leave another comment. Um, and you will see that you can use all the functions that you have in your regular Confluence editor as well. So for example, you can use your emoticons uh, if you like them. Um, if you know your shortcuts, you can get very quick links to pages uh, that you've just looked at uh, or you want to shortcut to. Um, And once you're done, oh, we're going to add another one. I think we're going to bring in someone else to the conversation. Um, right, there's going to be an ad mention. Poom, poom, that was fast. Uh, but so quickly you get other people into the page. You're looking at something, which happens very, happens very often, of course. You're seeing something, you think, hey, there is a colleague that needs to look at this as well. Poof. And what you're doing is you're sending uh, a small email, effectively, or a notification in Confluence uh, to that person. So the other person that is looking at the page actually sees these comments popping up on the screen as you go um, and can quickly just go through each of them and uh, act on it or simply reply. Uh, so in this case, we're adding, uh, yeah, um, doesn't agree, so that, answer, that question is answered, that comment is resolved, boom, gone. She goes to the next. Um, you can do your unlike and like as well. Uh, so you have that functionality. So literally everything that you're used to having on the Confluence page, we're giving you there in a little box focused on the specific bit that you want to comment on. All right. So that's, uh, that's the first uh, set of features that I wanted to show. So the page reviews, it helps you to, to work on uh, information on data in a contextual uh, part, uh, collaborative, and of course it's highly productive because you're not spending your time going through the entire post yourself. File collaboration. Um, so there's another screen cam here that is a recording here that I want to show. Let's see if we can get to that to work. So what we're doing here is uh, we're in product requirements, uh, but you can see how this works in any type of uh, page where you need files. Um, so this is, a, this is a part that is probably still somewhat familiar, where you can just upload files and incorporate them into your, uh, into your page. Uh, we've improved uh, the, the, the workflow there, so we've made it much nicer. Um, and you will also see that we line them up properly uh, without you having to do anything for it. Um, <clears throat> so now we've saved the page. What we can do now, we can preview it. So we're still in Confluence, uh, and this is a preview, and we're using uh, an image file here, but we do this for PDFs as well. We do it for Word files as well. Uh, I think there's about 20, 20 file formats already supported, and we'll add more uh, over time. Um, and so what you can do here is you can actually use that preview to look at it closely, but then you can also start making notes on it. Let's see where that's... Ah, there. You can just drag and drop where you want to leave a note. You just drag your cursor there. Uh, and again, you get your little editor, um, similar to what you saw in the page review. And everything that you can do with um, the editor in Confluence, you can do in the editor here as well. So you're actually viewing a file, a preview of a file, 
and it's not literally any file you want, but the most common formats that you, you will be using in your organization. And without ever leave, leaving Confluence, you can do everything in here. You don't have to download your Word document and start doing it there, then make your changes there, email it, or upload it to the page. You can comment it right here. All right. I'm happy to share the presentation with you later on if you want to see the full uh, demos of those. I think we're running out of time. How much time do we have? Five minutes? All right, I can do that. Let's do the last one. Uh, let's do a collaborate in context um, in more detail. So what we've seen so far, we've had inline comments for the page review. Uh, we've done file collaboration so that you don't have to leave Confluence when you're working on on your teamwork, uh, but we can reduce it even for further. So let's reduce more time overhead. <coughs> and this is something um, um, hopefully most of you agree on. Are you using Confluence for meeting notes? Yeah, yeah, quite a few. So a lot of people, however, will use Google Docs because Google Docs gives you the live editing. So they end up doing uh, the first draft or the first version in Google Docs and then paste that into Confluence. And yes, I've, I've done that myself. Um, so what do we do? Well, we give you live editing. And that's what we're doing here. So in live editing, there you go. Uh, this is your regular meeting notes page, as you're probably familiar with, or per perhaps, perhaps uh, your installation have, has reconfigured it a little bit, but uh, this is your standard way of doing it. However, now you have your invite others button. You invite others, just like you do uh, your regular share of a page, but this time you're inviting people. Uh, you can leave a small comment. Why are you inviting them to the page? You send it off, and poof, little by little, you see people are arriving on the page. They have a little token next to it so you can identify them. Again, you see their picture. Remember how important that was that you actually put a picture to everybody's ID, and there you go. They start typing together while they're in a meeting. Could be in a, a meeting in, a, in, the, in one meeting room, but of course it could be in a, a virtual meeting room as well. And they're making notes, um, and you see um, how they work together, how some of them will do status updates. Um, and I won't ask you to read everything that is going on on the screen here, but uh, you can see that. The level of interaction is, is, is 10 times higher than you would have if you're doing this uh, through other means. So, so um, we talked a lot about collaborate in context. What we're adding here is collaborate in real time. Um, and so again, as a company, um, before that, let me give you an idea of when uh, these things are coming. Um, so Confluence Data Center, we launched that already. That's available. Um, inline Commons file collaboration and the Roadmap Planner, uh, that's coming soon. <laughs> but hey, there is a bit of a hint because the live editing is coming in 2015. So hopefully soon is earlier than 2015, but hey. I just want to come back quickly to, um, to what, I, what I started with. Um, and so this is, uh, I like this quote, we are constrained by how big we dream, not by how big we can execute. And that's something that we try to do um, at Atlassian a lot. We try to attack big, big problems. Uh, don't do the small ones because they're boring. Try to do the big ones. That's how you make progress. And um, I just want to leave you with, with what is actually our mission as a company, and that's to unleash the potential in every team uh, to advance humanity through the power of software. And with that, any questions? They want no, beer, questions. right? They're ready for beer, I think. Oh, no. Okay. Okay. Um, I don't know. Have we decided on the version number? Uh, we can't share the version number. I was exactly. But it's coming soon. <laughs> <laughs>